Our presentation explores the development of our research question, how did Raha Ramahun Roy's participation in the 1832 UK Reform Act help the abolishment of slavery and thus improve the lives of the slaves in Bristol in the 19th century? We use this to further develop our understanding of Bristol as a place. In our learning through place module, we were able to refine and narrow down our area of interest within the forced labour module through the use of the rabbit hole. The rabbit hole journey allowed us to specify our area of interest to the East India Trading Company after we read British shipping records from the Bristol archives in one of our breakout sessions. Although we looked at different modules each week, including industrial labour and 21st century work, we were the most interested by this section. This led us down different lines of inquiry each week as we watched multiple videos and read lots of different sources. These videos included a perspective of someone walking through key areas of Bristol that linked to the slave trade history, such as Perrow's Bridge, to Ian Cook's video of the Black Lives Matter protests in 2020. Additionally, we read different academic sources during workshops that led us to our follow-up research tasks, which enabled to get us a deeper understanding of Bristol as a key port in Britain's slave trade history. We also looked at sources that varied from the 18th century to the present, from Bristol Museum archives to recent poetry such as Miles Chambers' Bristol, Bristol, which allowed us to follow different lines of inquiry and venture down different rabbit holes to develop our sense of place. Our understanding of place developed throughout the module as we undertook online research and spent time in Bristol to understand it as a place that is struggling to move forward from its slave trade history. This was evident through our online research which showed that Edward Colston, a prominent slave trader, had both his statue and name branded across the city, which led to feelings of anger and resentment within Bristol's population. Our lines of inquiry clearly showed that Bristol had not processed its history, and this was shown during the Black Lives Matter protests in Bristol as people aimed to fight back against the history. This was demonstrated when the statue of Edward Coldstone was dumped into the harbour side next to Perrow's Bridge during the Black Lives Matter protests in May 2020. Additionally, the video created by Ian Cook on the Black Lives Matter protest was hugely useful for our line of inquiry, as it gave lots of different perspectives from individuals to the police force on the protests. The protests surrounding the history of colonisation and slave trade within Bristol stuck out to us, so we began our research of the East India Trading Company and its involvement with the slave trading that was occurring in Bristol's ports at the time. As a result of the research into the British shipping records, the East India Company was our next point in our rabbit hole journey to help breadthen our knowledge and understanding of the slave trade that existed in Bristol in the 18th century. We undertook research to gather some key groundwork of the topic and found that in the 17th and 18th centuries, East India Company relied on slave labour and trafficked in slaves from Western East Africa, transporting them to its holdings in India and Indonesia, as well as to the island of St Helena in the Atlantic Ocean. A private corporation formed in December 1600 to establish a British presence in the lucrative Indian spice trade. This enabled the company to become an immensely powerful agent of the British imperialism in South Asia, and its Indian possessions were nationalised by the British Crown in 1858. We then began to rabbit hole and delve into the connections between Bristol and the East India Company through different methods of research. We found that Bristolian merchants had long-standing links with the company and brought different Indian textiles from the East India Company to trade with West Africa. As a result of our research on the East India Company, we found several key figureheads, including Robert Clive, who we initially decided to focus on. Through Bristol University's Department of Historical Studies and our rabbit hole research, we were able to discover some key findings. Robert Clive was born in 1725 and died in 1774, and was one of the most important and controversial figures in the formation of British India. In 1743, he started his career as a clerk for the company. Four years later, he switched to the military division role as he worked his way up through the ranks. In 1764, he gained the title of Governor and Commander-in-Chief, consolidating the East India Company's rule. Although Robert Clive was a large figurehead in the East India Company, we found that our rabbit hole ended at this point, as he did not have significant connections to Bristol as he only passively traded through Bristol, rather living in it. Therefore, he only established and contributed to Bristol as a place through the East India Company. We then decided to look at the Georgian House Museum to see if we could find anything on the Robert Clive's links to Bristol that weren't online, as the Georgian House is a historic building at 7 Great George Street, Bristol, which has now been re-established as a museum since 1937. However, we came across a statue whilst walking toward the museum that ultimately led to our research question, and that statue was that of R.R. R. Roy, 
We found little about him at the statue, so we thought we should follow up at the Georgian House Museum. However, it was closed. Therefore, we went to the M Shed to see if there's anything on him there. We felt that we could understand R.R. Roy and his involvement within the East India Company better if we went to museums such as the M Shed. As such, we first looked at the M Shed along Bristol Riverside. The M Shed included several models of boats that were used for shipments during the time at which slavery was legal. The M Shed had a variety and widespread of sources and different voices from those who were pro-slavery, the enslaved and those who fought for emancipation. There were boat models and the dates of the transportation shipment records, as according to M Shed in 2023. Ultimately, there wasn't a lot of information on R.R. Roy and his involvement within the East India Company at the M Shed, but it was useful to see the different ship models and the legacies they left at Bristol. Ultimately, there was a much great variety and selection of facts, figures, models and other artefacts at the M Shed. That was much more useful for our rabbit hole destination as it allowed us to refine our search for an answerable research question. Upon finding Roy's statue, we discovered that the statue was linked to the liberation of slaves and the abolishment of slavery in Bristol. Roy's legacy was ultimately linked to the liberation of slaves and was a part of the Indian Renaissance movement, which was an anti-colonial movement. The Indian Renaissance movement attempted to liberate slaves held under British ownership, and on the 1st of August 1834, 750,000 slaves in the British West Indies formally became free, as according to UK Parliament in 2023. This was aided by Roy during the, his final years as he took part in and witnessed the passage of the 1832 Reform Act, which introduced many electoral changes in Britain at the time, ultimately leading to the abolishment of slavery in 1834, again according to the UK Parliament 2023. He received a blue plaque within London that was erected in 1985 by the Greater London Council at 49 Bedford Square. The Raja eventually died in Bristol in 1833, and his work and legacy enabled him to participate in the abolishment of slavery, with his work efforts af affecting those in Bristol. Thus, though the historic tomb was built in 1843 in the authentic style of a chattery, additionally he also had the statue erected near the Bristol Cathedral. We were initially focused on how slaves would have integrated into society after the abolishment of slavery. However, when we came across the statue of Roy, we ultimately knew that would be our rabbit hole destination and the beginning of finding our answerable research question. This slide demonstrates our rabbit hole journey and how each stage led us to find our answerable research question. This was done through the different lines of inquiry that we discovered each week through different methods of research. These different lines of inquiry allowed us to understand Bristol as a place both past and present. However, we were consistently drawn back to week two in which we learned about forced labour. Although we took different angles throughout the, our rabbit hole journey, the breadth of knowledge and research that we came across ultimately allowed us to find Raja and his history with Bristol and how he contributed it to a place. Overall, the research undertaken online, the plaque on the tomb, has ultimately presented itself with what we wanted to focus on, as Ramahan Roy's legacy penultimately ensured the freedom of those in Bristol in the 18th and 19th century. Despite the Georgian House Museum being closed and some of the archives being inaccessible, we were able to further our research the history and context of Roy. There is still information we have not found in Roy due to the depth of his legacy, but we are happy with our answerable research question, as we believe that Roy helped to find Bristol as a place due to his involvement with the 1832 Reform Act. Ultimately, our rabbit hole journey came to an end with our answerable research question being, how did Raja Ramahan Roy's participation in the 1832 UK Reform Act help the abolishment of slavery and thus improve the lives of slaves in Bristol in the 19th century? Verbal information has been referenced within the notes section of the presentation and image referencing has been done on this slide.